This is creative visualization in Upper Manhattan, in Washington Heights more specifically. This is cycle one. We are going to be looking at different sites throughout New York. It's going to be about 20 to some 30 episodes where we'll be looking at different sites in New York and look at what, what we see unfolds or lets us know about the history of what New York City is. We are going to first look at this, the oldest mansion that we have in all of this island. Manhattan is very special territory, it's very expensive and uh, just manifests a, a quality that is unlike anything you experience in any other part of the world. I am right now in the second highest point of Manhattan. This particular space was developed in the 18th century. In the 18th century, meaning the 1700s, this house was built over here. 1760, 1766 is when this building was completed over here. And from here, you would have been able to see all the way down to the southern section of Manhattan. And you would, be, you would be able to see technically where the Statue of Liberty is today, basically. Or in the northern section of Manhattan, from here, you would have been able to see all the way down to the south. But all of these buildings today so obstruct the view. And looking in this direction, you would have been able to see all the way to New Jersey on the other side of the Hudson River. High point in Manhattan, the second highest point in Manhattan is the Morris Jumel Mansion. And it was built, the place was built by a British colonel named Morris. And Morris built this house as a summer residence for his wife, Mary Phillips. And they lived here for the summers from 1766 up until 1776 when war broke out. In the United States, they were loyal to the British monarch so they went back to England. They went to England. And the house became a property of the new government. George Washington himself used this house as his headquarters during the Battle of Harlem Heights in uh, 1776. This was about August 1776, August, September, that particular time. The house has a balcony. And from this balcony, we can connect to a very interesting dynamic of what this house is known for today. This is our, this is the creative visualization aspect of this video. This house is believed to be haunted. And that story begins to unfold with this balcony over here. Well, really the story that solidified this reputation begins to manifest in the balcony over here. And the story goes that in, 17, in 1965, a group of children were on a school trip. Hi. And sorry, I got a little bit distracted over there by the question from this is live video and this is what you generally experience 
on this particular approach it's, it's interesting i was looking at the as i was preparing to make this live video i was looking into the control panels and it's, it's amazing how much it has changed in just a couple of months now you can add all these sorts of masks and you have all of these like sorts of um controls different and it's, it's further evolving connecting to the world in this particular medium is a very interesting and unique experience but back to the story of the ghost and how the story began to manifest over here on this building uh, that story begins to unfold in 1965 when a group of school children were on a field on a trip and they were waiting to go into the building and they were playing outside here where we are and a woman came out of the balcony door and approached and told them to be quiet because to lower themselves because her husband was very ill she went back in and the children quieted down and then when the when the door was open for them to go in they asked the person that was taking care of them the, who was the woman that told them to be quiet and uh, the person that was attending them told them that there was no other person that she was the only one they were convinced that the person who told them that came out of the balcony and told them to be quiet was a real person and it was not there were other children uh, the story has been reported I mean you can speculate on it but when it comes to places in uh, the United States that have this haunted quality this tends to be one of those sites one of those locations you can visit today if you go and visit you're able to see furnishings in the French Empire style uh, the original furnishings were gone after 1776 the original owners basically took their furnishings this became the or I don't know what happened to the furnishings but I do know that the furnishings that are in here today were brought in by the second owners the Jumels this is why this is called the Morris Jumel mansion because of those two owners and in between those two owners George Washington used the place as his headquarters during the Battle of Harlem Heights and uh, these are the grounds um, we're lucky that the sun came out it's been cloudy all day and uh, And it's just a, a very nice and quiet space to sit and contemplate. Looking in the distance over there, that is the bronze. This is a sunken garden and they're already getting it ready for the for the season soon it'll be spring so all of this will be planted with beautiful flowers so in the 1930s is when it said that this space was configured like this the sunken garden and I'm guessing this sundial also comes from that time period. I don't know how to tell time with this necessarily. And there's really not a lot of sun. We just had a little bit. I don't see a shadow being casted by. 
but it does have all these markings, all these numbers that indicate the hours and the minutes. And there's a technique to be able to determine what time it is using these clocks. It has to do with the longitude of where you are on the planet, how far you are from the equator. And by subtracting or adding, depending where you are, the number of degrees that you are away from the equator, then you take that number and you subtract it to the number of minutes that you see here, and that's how you're supposed to determine what time it is using this particular system. It's a nice thing to experience a little sundial in the middle of a city. From here you can tell the type of plants that will be planted here, that will be coming in the, in the months to come. We'll be having some fennel. Bogoweed. I see garlic over there that is going to be planted, lemon balm, I wonder if this is lemon balm, or maybe it'll be right there, or maybe this is just a shrub decorating the garden, but this is going to be beautiful, just a couple of weeks from now, it's amazing how much this space is going to transform, the fragrance as well is going to be very potent at particular times, as you walk through the prominence you'll be able to experience uh, incredible fragrances oh let's, let me see this so the sun came out and the sundial is casting a shadow let's see well, i'm standing in the way of the shadow and you can tell that the shadow is a little bit over past 12 past this it was standing it was right about over here kind of quick the way it happened where it was there and then it wasn't maybe it's coming out again maybe a little bit of the sun is gonna come out again and it's gonna show the shadow I can kind of see it already I'm excited oh my god yeah there it is so yeah a little bit over past 12 so depending on how much you subtract or you add then you'll be able to like add in this case would be that will be able to determine what time you're at so like if you had 20 minutes or something 20 degrees that'll push it forward and that'll give you what time it is i don't know how to watch it i will but it's a nice uh, i just love it it's, it's something that you don't see in the world today a way to measure time using this non-mechanical contra contraption I think that in order to stop time and work with the dynamics of time, you have to connect to this particular essence of perceiving time. Because time was an invention by us people. And it's a tool that we use to organize our existence. Now, time here in New York ended on September 11, 2001. We have now the new New York. We have now the new world, basically. Everything is in place, everything is put together. And it's almost as if we are ready to go to the next step. And we will. But to, to go to that next step, we need to, in a way, prepare our minds for it. And the way that we do so is by almost developing a sort of a trans time transcendence to be able to perceive time non-linearly. And this is what's happening. The internet is making us go into that particular way of perceiving time. And uh, 
To begin our practice, I would, I'd like to begin this exploration that I'll be doing in the next couple of days and through the next couple of weeks. Begin here at the oldest house in Manhattan. This is the place from where George Washington realized that if, the, if this was to become an empire, if we were going to succeed, that from New York is where that organization was going to begin to take shape. And it has in many ways and continues. And now we have the new New York the world being reconfigured left and right but let's uh, take a look through the community as we saw it's nice that the song came out uh, let me know where you're watching from as well and if you have any questions on anything that you see we're, going, we're creatively looking uh, creatively visualizing the things that we have in front of us we see different time periods we see different um, demographics different types of living with beautiful brownstones there from the late 19th through early 20th century and the more neoclassical styles over here directly facing the mansion and again in the months to come when these flowers bloom it's going to be something very special again the fragrances the different colors this has to be one of what be my favorite section of New York it's beautiful it's super quiet it's the second highest point in New York with the oldest mansion and just beautiful, beautiful grounds and incredible history too. And views of the Bronx over there in the distance. There's a river in between where I am and the buildings that you see in the background over there. The East River. Look at the kitty over there just having fun bathing in the sun. This creature is relaxing. All right, let's uh, walk out of this particular area, out of the grounds of the mansion. This space is used for uh, for events. You can rent it out for celebrations community organizations host events over here they organize concerts in the summer months right now the mansion is closed they're restoring it but she is supposed to open again mid-march so mid this month they're conducting repairs and it does need need repairs for example as you can tell over there at the top there's some pieces of wood that are missing on the edge of that balcony that all of this all of these uh, beds will be planted and you have beautiful flowers um, different colors different fragrances and all of this through here as well to the left and right this is technically the entrance to the mansion When we exit the mansion, we encounter this cobblestone road. Townhouses across the street and townhouses in front. But these townhouses in the front are unique. They are different than the.
wind is blowing and it's I'm sure affecting the way that this sounds but we'll keep moving just basically contemplating this very nice sense of order and quiet in a city that is always loud <laughs> people live in these houses over here and sometimes some of them come up for sale they don't sell for more than two million dollars if i'm not mistaken This is called the Sylvan Terrace. Cobblestones Road. That would have led, that still lead to the Jumel Mansion over there in the background. If anyone has ever visited this section of New York, let me know in the comment section or if you'd like to experience it, let me know as well and from let me know also where you are tuning in from. It's a quiet day today, well in this section and it's also Sunday so there's not a lot going on when it comes to commercial activity. I mean all the businesses are open but you don't see like trucks moving about, there's no school too. So just people from the community engaging in Sunday activities. If you walk by in the mornings in the in this section, you'll see people going to church. This is a more modern aspect of New York that people know of, or the more the more familiarly recognizable aspect of Harlem that people know of. This is St. Nicholas Avenue. 